This video is brought to you by Jab.se, the lead supplier of MMA gear in Scandinavia. BetSafe.com, Europe's only online betting site for MMA. Being back here, man, is this good memories, bad memories? What is it? It's great memories, man. Uh, someone was telling me earlier that um, I think I'm the only one that said I would actually come back and do this. But it was fun. You know, it was familiar. At the time that it happened, it was a good distraction, so... It was good to see the equipment and all that stuff. Just brought me back. What was the experience like for you? Do you feel like you, you, you grew at all, you know, not just as a fighter, but as a person? I feel like, you know, you, you've kind of de developed this confidence along the way. And, uh, you know, you were very uh, appreciative of what Chael did for you along the way. So what's that been like for you? Oh, absolutely. Um, I just think at the given time that it happened, again, uh, you know, when Chael was here and coaching me, it wasn't just the physical aspect. It was the mental. And, you know, I said it before, I think in a situation like this where you have, like, what, six weeks? What can you learn in that six weeks, you know? So it's, it's the gruelingness of it and how to overcome that. And Chael was just that positive influence. You know, he kept us motivated all the time, and he stayed on top of that. Even, even before the uh, season was over, people were already buzzing about there was going to be one guy on there with highlight knockouts and so on. H now you're out of the house. How does it feel knowing that you're that guy that people are talking about? It feels the same. <laughs> I think I'm the same guy. The only difference is I'm on TV. Nothing really. I just started out this to, you know, see how far I can take it. I didn't sign up for all the fame, all that publicity. I really didn't. How far do you think you can take it? As far as God let me. You know, as long as I'm breathing, I'll be doing this. It seems like Dana White is a pretty big fan of yours. Have you gotten that sense at all? Do you, do you feel like you're kind of one of his favorites? Uh, judging from every, you know, everything that people saying and the little small comments like, oh, man, Dana, man. Eh. He's a great guy, man. I hung out with him, you know. He's a really cool guy. I think he's very passionate for what he does and uh, how he, you know, goes into the sport and stuff like that. But I'm a big fan of Dana, too, so, <laughs> hey. As highly touted as you have been with the entire series, do you feel an exorbitant amount of pressure to really put on a performance come fight night? Absolutely, but I don't feed into that. You know, I think that a lot of people looking at me as the guy to beat or, oh, man, can this guy go up against this guy or whatever. I don't feed into that because, again, I go in the ring by myself. I don't think I have anything to prove to anybody. You know, I did this alone, so I have no one's expectation to live up to but myself. Right, well, what, what went through your head when Chael Sonnen said that you're ready for all contenders and he pointed to Anderson Silva's picture? Oh, I know that was coming. Uh, <laughs> I was shocked, man. I was like, what? <laughs> Give me time. Let me build up. But sometimes, you know, I guess as a coach, yeah, they will see things in you that you don't see. And, that, you know, since he's my coach in that time, he, he saw that potential and, Maybe down the line, you know, maybe one day it will happen, but it's not something I'm pushing. I feel personally this guy's a walking legend, and, you know, if I ever get the opportunity one day, that will be great, but I'm not looking towards that. You know, I'd rather earn my way up there like the rest of the guys. Also, Weidman said that uh, publicly that you were coming to train with him, but I've heard you say that that's a rematch that you want. Can you clarify what, what the situation is with that? Um... Yeah, it's still kind of new to me. I mean, it was something that my coach kind of suggested too, and I'm like, eh, I don't know. As long as I am, my ego's not allowing it. But I think, you know, as a fighter, to improve, you need that, you know. But in the back of my head, I'm like, I have to fight this guy. And, you know, I don't want it to be like a Jones and Rashad incident. So as much as good it is to, to, to get off that and, and learn and get better, the other side is saying, ah, not yet. How much has wrestling been a factor in your training, knowing that you're going up against a guy like Kelvin that has a very strong wrestling base? I'm not really worried about it because, um, you know, for me as a fighter, as a striker, it was always been a fear. Oh, man, what if I get taken down? But I think if you don't train your, your mind and, you know, to, okay, accept the fact you're going to be taken down, now what can you do? And I, I fall out of that element. Before it was like, if I get taken down, what am I going to do? And now it's like, if you get taken me down, I'm going to fight you still. So I'm not really worried about it as wrestling. I know I'm not a great wrestler but I know I can punch from any position. As you've been doing all these interviews this week, have you, have you kind of felt the need to tell everybody, like, like what you just mentioned, I am still growing, so let's tap the brakes a little bit? Because there are people saying, I want to see Uriah in a title shot very soon. I want to see him fight a top 10 guy. Do you, when you hear those things, do you want to remind people, like, man, I'm just coming off with the ultimate fighter. Everybody relax a little bit. I mean, has that been a, a, something that you've been doing this week in interviews? Absolutely. I mean, you said it perfect, you know, relax. Uh, <laughs> It's not something, again, I'm focused on. I, I feel as a martial artist, I'm still growing. I'm still getting better. You know, this is a chapter in my life, and I think I needed it. It was placed there, and I took it. And 
you know, there's still some things I have to work on, and I'm my own, my own worst critic. So I, I'm I'm constantly getting better. I'm constantly improving, and I like that. I don't want to push anything because, mm -hmm. again, I don't want to live to anybody's expectation. You know, I have my own. Are you? Are you? What kind of feeling do you get from the UFC? Like I mentioned, Dana's a big fan of yours. I mean, <laughs> do, are you telling him like, give me good fights, but you know, not, I, I'm still growing. Like, have you told the UFC that, or you just kind of accept whatever they give you? I'm accepting whatever they give me. I just know that you know, if I go in there, I'm going to fight. You know, I don't have to sell a fight or a talk. I pretty much talk with my fists. That's what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe in all that trash talking and build up. It's not me. It's not who I am. I enjoy the sport. I love the competition, and I love the idea of growing as a martial artist. And that's how I look at it. So I don't need to trash talk or call anybody out. But if they give you like a top ten guy, you you, you, you feel comfortable with it, even though you are still growing. You'd be like, all right, yeah, why not? Me what this. am I gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta take. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your confidence for a minute. You made a, a really interesting uh, comment on the show where you likened yourself to kind of a you had that Anderson Silva kind of approach to where you felt like people might not want to fight you when they get in the cage to you. Your confidence, did that, did, was that prior to the show or did that kind of build with you during the show? I definitely think it built during the show. Uh, and again, you know, what Chael said to me, uh, you know, as athletes, we were the hardest on ourselves and I don't pat myself on the back enough. You know, I've accomplished a lot and I feel like I haven't really looked back and said, oh, wow, I did all that. Because I'm always used to, all right, what's next? Because I feel I have to get better. But... I think sometimes you just have to take that break and say, okay, you did all that, man, you know, take a break. And he just made me realize that at the height of this competition, it's okay to fail. And I'm like, what? So it just brought me to a different mindset to just go out there and have fun and think more of the performance than the outcome. And it worked. Were you surprised by how much of a mentor Chael became to you? I mean, did you have kind of a different perception of him before the show? I did, you know. I mean, I, I saw stuff on TV before, and I always liked Chael. I thought he was a funny guy, man. Whatever smack talk he has, I'm like, I like this dude. He's funny. But, you know, hanging out with him, I got to uh, know the real side of Chael, even off camera. And he's really generally a nice guy, you know, down to earth. And you can ask that guy any question, man. He's a great guy. You're right, well, guys. What was it like for you watching the final episode of The Ultimate Fighter in a room full of, full of the cast members? And is the animosity still in the room? Is the tension still there? Or is that, was that gone for you? I think the tension was kind of dying down a little bit, you know. Uh, we all kind of knew we had to have had one more fight. And... We all went home and released all that stress. So coming back, it was, it was a little better. There's not much tension. But, you know, watching the fight, I got a little emotional because Dylan was there too. You know, me and Dylan were good friends. And, again, I generally don't like to hurt people, but unfortunately I do. But, you know, I, it got a little emotional. But it was cool, man. You know, like me and Josh were hanging out. We took a picture, we tweeted it, make fun of the whole situation. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it's business. And uh, at the given time that we were there, stuff's going to happen. You know, people could have their – comments and all that but you're not there so you don't understand so certain things could come out a different way but you could look at me and you know someone else is a different person like for instance josh you know as much as people think you know he's arrogant and all that he had a plan you know we both had the same goal to make it to the end but he just had a different route you know and my route was like give me whoever his route was like all right let me do this so i can't be too mad at that this video is brought to you by jab.se the lead supplier of mma gear in scandinavia betsafe.com Europe's only online betting site for MMA.